Hi, so welcome once again to the class of measurement of outcomes. In the last class, I discussed about measurement of outcome and that I discussed about the measurement of mortality rates. Okay. Now, in this video for this class, I will discuss about measurement of morbidity. So, morbidity as I told yesterday also. So, morbidity basically means it is the number of cases of disease or events in a population okay, per unit time. So, if you take population as per 100 and unit time as per year, so morbidity becomes events per 100 per year. Okay. So, morbidity is basically what? It is number of cases of disease in a population in a year that gives us the morbidity. Okay. Now, how to do measurements of morbidity? Morbidity can be measured by two different ways. First is incidence and the second is prevalence. Okay. What is incidence? So, if we take a population okay, which is at a risk of getting a disease. Okay. So, incidence basically means occurrence of new cases in a population is called as incidence. It is always about occurrence of new cases. Whereas, prevalence is it is the total number of cases in the population which accounts for the old cases and also the new cases. Okay? So, it is a sum of the new cases plus the old cases in a population whereas incidence is only about the new cases in the population. So, as we see in the slides incidence is equal to number of new cases in particular time period divided by total population at risk during the same time period. Okay? So, population is there for a time period of suppose one year from Jan to December. In that population, what are the number of new cases in that same time period? Okay, So, which is equal to number of new cases in particular time period divided by total population at risk during the same time period will gives will give us the incidence okay so incidence is the number of newly diagnosed cases of a disease occurring during a given period of time this is what we are discussing is can be better better expressed in two different ways these are first is the call it is called as Incidence proportion are also called as cumulative incidence and the second one is called as incidence rate. So, this slide you will see the uh, image where it shows an example of incidence. Okay. Suppose we see a population having 10 members. Okay. So, this brown color shows that they are healthy. So, this population of 10 people are healthy in January 2016. Okay, but when it comes to December 2016 in the same year, December 31st, we find that out of those 10 healthy people, 3 people are diseased which is being shown in this black color. So, this black color shows that 3 person are a diseased person means they are the new cases in a population of 10 person. So, incidence becomes what? It becomes as 3 by 10. So, 3 by 10 becomes the incidence of that particular population. So, as I told incidence can be measured in two different ways. One is called as cumulative incidence or also called as incidence proportion. Now, what is this? It is the number of new cases within a specified time period divided by the size of the population initially at risk. Okay. So, for example, if a population initially contains 1000 non-diseased persons and 28 develop a condition over a period of 2 years time, therefore, the incidence proportion becomes that is 28 cases per 1000 person which is 28 by 1000 which comes as 2.8 percent. So, this 2.8 percent basically gives us the 
incidence proportion are also called as cumulative incidence. Next is next method to measure incidence is that is called as incidence rate. What is this incidence rate? It is the number of new cases per unit of person time at risk. Okay. So, IR which stands for incidence rate is equal to number of new cases of disease during a period of time divided by the person time at risk. Now, what is this person time at risk? So, the person time at risk basically means that it is a measurement combining the number of persons and their time contribution in a study and the number of days during which they remain disease free, but they were at the risk of getting a disease. So, in simple language, we are taking the population, in that population, the number of person, okay, who are taking part in the study, okay. So, those number of person, for how many days they participate in the study and for, for those number of days, they should remain disease free, even though they are at risk of getting disease and this is called as person time at risk. This is called as person time. Okay. This person time we take we take while into account while calculating this incidence rate. Okay, that is number of new cases of disease during period of time divided by the person time at risk. Means the number of days a person is contributing for a study and being disease free even though they are at risk of getting a disease. So, we have seen about incidence. Now, what is prevalence? As I told you in the start only, prevalence is basically a combination of the old cases and the new cases at a given point of time or for a time period. Okay. So, it is a concerned with the disease status that is new cases and old cases in a population during a specified time or time period. So, the equation is prevalence is equal to number of old and new cases of a disease in a particular point of time or or a particular time period divided by total population at risk during the same time period. Now, this prevalence can be of two types. It can either be a point prevalence or it can be a period prevalence. What is point prevalence? It is the number of cases that exist at a given point of time. For example, in a particular week, in a particular month, okay. So, it is a point of time. So, the number of cases means which consists of the old cases plus the new cases at that particular time is called as the point prevalence. Second is the period prevalence. So, it is for the time period. Suppose for a period of 6 months, for a period of 1 month, sorry, uh, 1 year. So, suppose Jan to December. So, it is a time period. Okay. So, in this time period, what is the total number of the old cases and the new cases? And this will give us the period prevalence. Okay. Hence, period prevalence is what? It is the number of cases that exist in a population during a specified time period. So, in this uh, image we can see, this explains about the point prevalence. Okay. So, we can see here in January 2016, on January 1, 2016, okay, in a population of 10, there was two diseased cases. The black denotes suppose disease and the brown color denotes healthy person. So, there were two diseased cases in the month of January. 
out of that 10. Okay. Now, when we came to December, we find that out of that 10, now we are having 5 diseased cases. Okay. So, this 5, that 5 So, this 5 black colors indicates as I told diseased cases. Okay. So, what we had? We in January, we had 2 diseased cases. Now, we have 5. It shows that out of that 5, those 2 are the old cases and then we have that 3 new cases. So, 3 plus 2 is total giving us about the 5 cases of diseased. Okay. And this is called as prevalence. It accounts for both the old cases and also the new cases. Okay. But we are talking about at a point. So, in January, we had 2 cases, 2 prevalence and in December, we have got 5 cases. So, at a particular point of time. This image explains about the period prevalence. So, for a period of suppose 12 months from January 1, 2016 to December 31, 2016. So, in this population of suppose 30 uh, members, we have 6 members who are diseased. Okay, And these 6 members are old plus the new cases. Okay, since it is giving about the time period from Jan to December, it is called as a period prevalence. Now, this prevalence which I explained, it can increase or it can decrease. Okay, so what are the factors which contributes to the increase of prevalence or which contributes to the decrease of prevalence? Okay, coming first to increase of prevalence. Okay, so as I told you, prevalence is combination of both old plus new cases. Okay, so if the longer duration of disease is there in a population, means the disease is there in a population for a longer time, the people are not getting cured. So, every now and then we are, we are having addition of new cases. So, in that condition, what is happening? prevalence will keep on increasing because disease is there, people are not getting cured. So, that leads to the increase of prevalence. Second point, prolongation of life with treatment. Okay? So, population is there which is diseased and for that disease, the people are taking some treatment. Okay? But they are not yet cured, they are still under treatment which means that disease is still continuing which means that prevalence is still there and it is still increasing. Third point, increase in incidence as they will be keep on, as they will be you know, keep on addition of new cases and new cases means basically incidence. Okay. So, as there will be increase of incidence in the population, naturally what will happen, prevalence will always keep on increasing as prevalence is combination of new cases plus old cases. Fourth point, immigration of new cases means new cases are coming from other country to one country. So, there is always addition of new cases in the country from other country which puts a load on the already having a means uh, uh, cases of disease in a population. So, in this condition also what happens? The prevalence keeps on increasing. Next is better reporting of cases. If the cases are getting reported in a very, very good manner, means there is no manipulation, all the government agencies are reporting the cases in a true manner. So, in that case, we will have a true figure, a true data of the people who are diseased, means the people who are having the old cases or who are the new addition of the cases. So, in that case, we will also always have a, a high figure or high data which shows the, that there is an increase of prevalence. And lastly, emigration of healthy people. Means, if a healthy people from a country now goes to other country, so what happens? The country which they vacated, so naturally what will happen? Now they will have more number of diseased cases and less number of healthy people. Hence, in that scenario, 
prevalence will increase. Clear? So, all these are different factors which leads to the increase of prevalence. Okay? Now, I will discuss about which factors or on what condition prevalence decreases. So, we will find that it is opposite of all these factors. We will see it. So, prevalence decreases. First is shorter duration of disease. Means, disease is was there, but it was only there for short duration. Okay. So, in that case, disease came and went off. Hence, the people are not getting diseased again. So, what happens? The prevalence will decrease. Clear? Second is improved cure rate. Means, the people or the patients who were on treatment, they got cured. Now, the disease is free. So, it means that the cases of disease has decreased, which means that prevalence is decreasing. Third point, decrease in incidence. Means, now there is no addition of new cases or now there is less addition of new cases. And in that scenario also what happens? The prevalence will decrease. Fourth point, emigration of new cases. Means, whatever new cases is the country getting, so those new cases are going to the other country. Means, they are emigrating. Means what? Now, there are more healthy people in a country and less people who are diseased. So, in that scenario, what happens? The prevalence will decrease. Next, under-reporting of cases. So, when the cases are not getting reported properly, when there is manipulation, so in that case, even though the cases of disease are more, people are reporting less cases, which is called as under-reporting and that will lead to decrease of prevalence. So, we do not know the exact figure, the true figure of number of diseased or number of old cases or the number of new cases. So, in that case, we will have a less figure that will show there is a decrease of prevalence. And lastly, immigration of healthy people means healthy people from other country is coming to one country. So, again what is happening? Healthy population is increasing and decreased people are, uh, diseased people are decreasing. So, this will again lead to decrease of prevalence. Okay. So, all these points lead to decrease of prevalence. Okay. Today, we discuss about measurement of morbidity and I discussed about morbidity can be basically measured into two ways that is incidence and prevalence. Okay. So, that is all for today. Thank you.